Sometimes people think they have to do big things in order to make a change. But if each one would light a candle, we'd have a tremendous light. Sister Thea Bowman. Sister Thea Bowman was a light to her community, her country, and the world. She challenged everyone, from the highest levels of the church to the children in her choirs, to share the love of Jesus and to love one another. Her courage manifested itself throughout her life and always in transformative ways. Sister Thea encouraged the church to be open just because of her personality, her spirit. She was alive, she was warm, she was inviting. I often said that no one ever was introduced to Thea, you encountered her. She would bring her joy, her song, her music, her life to the church. And what she brought to the church was a sense of everyone must come bringing their gifts. She would often say, you have a gift, I have a gift. We all need to bring our gifts for the service of the Lord and the service of the church. She also encouraged the church not to be so stagnant or stale, but to be open, to be alive, to be vibrant. Sister Thea grew up in a very segregated town. Her father, a doctor, and her mother, a teacher, lived their lives in service to their communities. Thea herself, then called Bertha, first encountered Catholics at her grade school, Holy Child Jesus School in Canton, Mississippi. There she was inspired by a group of women in a religious order, the Franciscan Sisters of Perpetual Adoration. Thea not only loved the great education and the challenge of education there, and she was learning, but she loved the religion. She loved the sisters. Thea's attraction to the Franciscan Sisters of Perpetual Adoration wasn't because they were just simply nuns. She was mostly attracted to the Roman Catholic Church and to this order because of their commitment to the poor, the neglected, the abandoned. They gave their lives in service of the gospel and she herself wanted to do the same. And she was so enamored by them and chose to join the Franciscan Sisters of Perpetual Adoration. Young Bertha asked to become Catholic at the age of nine. Just a few years later, she asked to join the Franciscans. She continued her education and began to travel, always taking her music and her faith with her. She loved music. Her mother taught her the classics, taught her the spirituals, and she was surrounded by a community of singers. In fact, her next door neighbors were the Garrett family, and there were brothers and sisters, siblings, who would always play piano, guitar, and they would always have songs and sing their jubilee. She often said, I came from a community that sang our jubilee, that sang our joy. We would walk down the street singing. She was so full of love and joy for music that she herself had a beautiful operatic voice. And wherever she went, she used music as a way of connecting with people. One sister recalled, it was a joy to sit beside her because her singing was so beautiful. She sang from her spirit. Even as a busy teacher and vocalist, Sister Thea found time to earn a doctorate in literature and travel the world, taking students to England and visiting Africa to connect with her own heritage. As she taught, sang, and experienced life, she began to form a theology in diversity and inclusion that would become the hallmark of her public life. The late Bishop William Houck invited her to foster intercultural awareness in the Catholic Diocese of Jackson. Even while working in Mississippi, Sister Thea traveled the country teaching workshops on music and speaking about the importance of diversity in the church. Her influence, both in and outside of the church, was tremendous. She appeared on the television news magazine, 60 Minutes. Harry Belafonte met with her in hopes of producing a movie about her life. She was one of the most sought after speakers in the country. Did Thea Bowman let the fame go to her head? Did she get the big head? No, Thea was a woman who first of all was religious. And while she was very extroverted, personally she was introverted. She would want to spend time quiet to, to, to look at God working in her lives to meditate. She never let fame go to her head because she knew it wasn't about her. 
She, her life was committed to the service of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Her, her life was for other people. So when, whenever asked to speak somewhere, wherever, to be on 60 Minutes, to, to meet Whoopi Goldberg, or to meet Harry Belafonte, while that was exciting, she was just down to earth. She was very educated, earned a PhD, very articulate, one of the William Faulkner scholars of, this, of, of her time. And yet, when you met her, she had a folksy way about her. She wanted to know how your mom and them doing, how everybody's doing, what, what's, what's happening with you. It wasn't about her, her love and her concern was about her sisters and brothers. Share with me your life and in turn I will share with you mine. She was diagnosed with breast cancer in 1984. As the cancer worked its way into her bones, she continued to maintain a grueling travel schedule, praying Lord, let me live until I die, and if that prayer is answered, how long really does it matter? When the doctors diagnosed her to have breast cancer, it threw Thea for a loop, but it also made her dig deep inside her soul. When they told her, Thea, you're going to ultimately die, we don't know if it's going to be a few months or a few years, Thea decided with God that she was going to live. You know, she prayed that God would heal her body, but her prayer was, you know, if you heal my body, thank you, God. If you call me home to glory, thank you, God. She would often say that if God didn't give her what she asked for, she believed God was going to give her something better. And she began to live life to the fullest. Um, I'm one of her biographers. I've studied her life and read about her. And it seems like Thea Bowman, in her 52 years, her last six years of her life, she had more speaking engagements, more writing assignments, more visiting of schools and children than she ever had in her whole life. She did more in her six years than you and I would ever do in a lifetime. One of her last public appearances, delivered from a wheelchair, was speaking to the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops. She told them she was fully black and fully Catholic, and urged them to embrace their African American, Vietnamese, Native American, and their other cultural flux. What does it mean to be black and Catholic? It means that I come to my church fully functioning. That doesn't frighten you, does it? I come to my church fully functioning. I bring myself, my black self, all that I am, all that I have, all that I hope to become. I bring my whole history, my traditions, my experience, my culture. If you were to ask Thea Bowman, Sister Thea, how would you bring diversity to the church? And her question or response would be, what do you think? She would often say that you don't bring diversity to the church. If the church is truly the people of God, the church is diverse. It's about everyone sitting at the table. And she would often say, you know, I don't mind eating off of your plate at the table, but are you willing to eat off of mine? In other words, Thea often asked people to share their gifts, to, to share their culture, she says, I want to know about your family. I want to know about your traditions, your customs. But I also want to share mine. I have gifts to bring to the church. Sister Thea believed the church could welcome diversity while still upholding tradition. She closed her speech by getting the men to stand, link arms, and sing the spiritual, We Shall Overcome. We shall overcome. Y'all get up. Oh, we shall overcome. We shall overcome. continues to spread her light. There are several Catholic schools named for her, 
and even a public high school that offers education, leadership, and service. A foundation named in her honor provides educational scholarship and those who carry on her tradition of joyful praise and respectful challenge. She saw herself as someone who was very humble, someone who was very loving, and she never considered herself a, a holy or a saintly person. She was just being the best Thea Bowman she could be. A young girl once asked Thea, uh, who was a, a daughter of a friend of hers, she said, uh, I hear that they consider you a saint. And she, she asked her as she was in her sick bed, Sister Thea, are you a saint? And she says, well, I don't know. If being a saint means falling down and getting back up again, well, I guess I am going to be a saint. I want to be an instrument of peace. I want to be an instrument of hope. I want to be an instrument of faith and joy. Sister Thea Bowman. You guys just made me nervous. No, I was there. I didn't know I was speaking to God is with us and an angel. Well, this you didn't know this was how the judgment was going to happen. And then we got the Gospel of Mark here telling the story. <laughs> All right. I love this. All right.